ridiculous, Captain. You know as well as I do that Freddy didn't murder Dr. Brock. But the evidence clearly indicates that he did. Freddy Butler wouldn't hurt a soul, Captain. You know that. I know that, and you know that. But the district attorney doesn't know that. All he knows is that a murder has been committed, and Freddy Butler confessed to the crime. Freddy Butler confessed his thing. Last week, he even confessed to a suicide. <laughs> I know all about Freddy Butler's compulsion to confess, but that doesn't mean he isn't capable of murdering someone. Come on now, Captain. Without a motive? You told me you how much he hated, resisted, and resented Dr. Brock's attempt to help him. Now, that's motive. But that motive is not motivation enough to murder. What's that? Look, everybody hates, resists, and resents somebody, but that doesn't mean they go out and kill them. If it did, I would have murdered Higginbottom a dozen times last year. And I, you. <laughs> Excuse me, Captain. I have Freddie Butler's confession and a full report. Tear it up, Higginbottom. It's not worth the paper. It's typed on. Let's get one thing straight here. I'm fully aware how you two feel about Freddie Butler, but nevertheless, a crime has been committed in the city, and he's our prime suspect. Our prime suspect. <laughs> Let's look at the facts. Freddie Butler was in the room with the victim. Fact, fact. Fact. The door could only be unlocked from the inside. Fact, fact. Fact. <laughs> Now, there were two shots fired from within that room, and when you two broke the door down, you found Dr. Brock lying on the floor dead, Freddy Butler standing there with a gun in his hand. Fact! 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 Dr. <laughs> Bottom, do you realize you have a very annoying habit of interrupting me when I'm about to make a point? I do? Yes, and that's a fact! Fact? Fact! <laughs> fact! All right, now here's the most important fact of all. The district attorney considers this an open and shut case. As far as he's concerned, this case is closed. And you two are to stay away from Freddy Butler as far as possible. Do I make myself clear? About what? Get out. <laughs> and that's the complete story, Captain. The building guard is out of the squad room right now if you want to talk to him. That won't be necessary, Higgin Rodham. Direct disobedience of orders, breaking and entering, and conducting a search without a warrant. That is a 411, a 504, and a 201. Do you two know what these charges amount to? Well, I'm not sure, but I think it's over a thousand. Sergeant Crook, are you going to sit there and do jokes? Do you want me to? Of course not! Oh, then I won't. <laughs> you two are in trouble. Serious trouble. For investigating a case. For investigating a closed case! Look, Captain, it may be closed to you, but it's not closed to us. That's insubordination! That's a 301. That brings it to 1300. <laughs> I'll tell you what it brings it to. It brings it to your suspension. Suspension? Yes, you're suspended. Now, wait a second, Captain. Hear us out first, and then if you still feel the same way, suspend us. I'm listening. This afternoon, we found out that Dr. Brock and his nurse were engaged to be married. And tonight, we found out from the building guard that the doctor was fooling around with other women in his office at night, and his nurse finally caught him at it. Which means that she had a motive to kill him, and that makes her a suspect. Are you finished? Yes. You're suspended. <laughs> you know what he'll say? You're crazy! I told you that's what he'd say. <laughs> Listen, Captain, maybe you didn't understand George too well. Why don't you hear me out? All right, go ahead. Dr. Brock hypnotized Freddy. While Freddy was in this hypnotic state, the murderer entered the room and shot the doctor. The murderer took the gun, placed it in Freddy's hands. Then just before he left the room, he snapped his fingers, bringing Freddy out of that hypnotic state. Now, when Freddy came to and he saw the gun in his hand and the body of the doctor on the floor, he assumed that he had done the killing. But he assumed that with his conscious mind. The murder was locked in his subconscious mind. Is that so? Well, explain this to me, Sergeant Freud. <laughs> how could the murderer get into a room that could only be unlocked from the inside? And how did the murderer just happen to know enough about hypnosis to bring Freddy out of an unconscious state? And how come Freddy didn't see the murderer leave the room if he was in a conscious state at that point in his consciousness? George, you take it from here. <laughs> we'll find the answer to these questions, Captain, if we hypnotize Freddy again and question him while he's in a subconscious state. That's how. <laughs> all right, all right, your theory does hold some water. But what do you think the district attorney's going to do to me when he finds out that I let you two pursue an open and shut case? If we don't pursue it, Captain, we may be convicting an innocent man, and I don't want that on my mind for the rest of my life. Who do you have in mind to hypnotize Freddy Butler? We've already approached several men, Captain, and we found one who said that he'd be willing to do it. This hypnotist is eminently qualified. He holds degrees in medicine, psychology, psychiatry. He's on the staff of the state hospital. He gives lectures, and he packs them in at night. Freddie, stop being so stubborn. Dr. Horlock 
is here to help you. Gentlemen, I'm afraid if Mr. Butler will not cooperate as a willing subject, any attempt to hypnotize him is absolutely impossible. Uh, let me handle this, doctor. Listen, Freddy, if you play along with us, I think I can fatten your record. How? Well, we've got a couple of unsolved crimes I can throw you away. What do you got? Well, we have a few gas station holdups, a couple of bank robberies, and a nice awesome job. Any murders? And no, but I can give you the attempted bombing of a federal building. I'll take it. It's all yours. Are we ready to start? Not yet, Doctor. There's another person coming I felt should be present during this. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Send her right in. Miss Miller, thank you for coming. Won't you sit down, please? This is Dr. Leonard Holock. I believe you know everybody else. I don't understand. Why am I here? We're going to conduct an experiment, and we thought your presence would be helpful. Uh, you can continue now, Doctor. Freddy, I want you to pick out a spot on that wall behind me, and I want you to concentrate on it as I talk to you. Have you picked out a spot? Yeah. Good. Now I'm going to count very slowly from one to a hundred. Are you ready? Here we go. One, two, three... Four. Mr. Butler, what are you doing? I asked you to concentrate. Oh, that's not his fault, Doc. The spot that he picked flew away. It was a fly. <laughs> All right, Freddy. Never mind the wall. Just look into my eyes and concentrate. I'm going to count very slowly to 100. When I reach 20, you will begin to feel drowsy. When I reach 30, your eyelids will become heavy. When I reach 40... They will slowly close and so on. You understand? Good. Now we'll begin again. One. I told you he was good. Well, he certainly is a receptive subject. Miss Miller, I think you should be made aware of your rights. Won't be necessary, Captain. We were engaged. We were, we were supposed to get married. Then Ralph started seeing other women and... Well, I just couldn't take that. The thought of losing him to another woman, he meant everything in the world to me. I just... Well, for what it's worth, Miss Miller, you planned this crime quite expertly. You almost got away with it. Your bringing Mr. Butler to the office was perfect timing. I knew he'd confess to the murder. Why not? He confesses to everything. Cook, Robinson, take Miss Miller. Nobody's taking Miss Miller anywhere. I am leaving. Stay right where you are. Miss Miller, you'll never get away with it. There's over a hundred police officers out there. Oh, no, not at this time, Captain. Most of our men are out on duty. <laughs> Where you are. I'll shoot the first person that follows me. Hey, on, stop that woman! Make one move and he gets it. Let's rush her. It's only Higginbottom. Oh, no, don't. All of you, get over there with the others. Now I'm taking Higginbottom as far as the front door. And I warn you, don't try anything. You'll never get out of here alive. We'll see. I wouldn't give that for your chances. Goodbye, gentlemen. Oh, 